Hi all, we're planning to test out various video cards that are available on the market. But beware, not all cards that are the same at a first glance are equally productive. Today we are reviewing the RX 580 GB gaming card version with a memory module from Micron. Traditionally, gaming video cards are made in a way to enable the user to play around the clock, but not to mine. Simply turning on the card and overclocking it isn't any fun. So let's delve inside together and check everything out. Let's start with the casing. It's not badly made, but it's so thin on the sides they can easily be broken. The cooling system consists of three tubes and the radiator is in contact with the power system, at least so it seems. Let's open the graphics card and see how everything works. The main question is how the memory modules are cooled inside the video card. Around the clock cooling greatly affects the stability of the hash rate and determine for how long the chips will function at a maximum performance level without degrading. The contact with the GPU isn't of a very high quality. Look, there's a small gap between the three tubes. This means that there is an area that doesn't touch the chip and the surface isn't perfectly even. The manufacturers usually only try to cool the GPU because they think that only the processor heats up, but we won't be using the graphics card to play games. As we can see, the cooling structure has its own problems. The power system is an important part of the card and one of three components that directly affects the stability of a hash rate and the overclocking parameters. It contacts through a thick gasket with a steel base. So the heat is not being removed in any way, it's just a piece of steel. The memory is the part that will actually be overclocking for the best result. The memory supply contacts the board, but we are interested in whether this board is in contact with aluminium radiator. As we can see, the memory is simply cooled by a piece of steel. This is unacceptable during mining, since memory and the memory power supply system heats up just as much as the GPU, possibly even more. For Ethereum mining, we will need to down the voltage of the GPU for better indication of energy efficiency to make the card consume less electricity in order for us to earn more. Removing a thermocouple from the chokes, this is a useless thing, but a pretty good system to power the memory, a two-phase power supply. However, the power phase of the memory controller is poor. It consists of only a single phase. It consists of only a single phase, and there is a reason to doubt the quality of the clamp and the heat sink. Dissipation of the heat can spread over the entire area of the board, also, a voltage regulator can be found on the reverse side, which contributes to the heating of this area. We can also see the six phases of the GPU power supply, a 12 volt input choke and the PCIe power supply together with a separate controller. Let's reassemble the graphics card and test how well it can mine. We'll reassemble the card and apply the thermal paste. We install the card in the razor, placing it conveniently to show the real temperatures within the card. The fans are now working 100% and the card has been mining for 15 minutes straight. Let's look at the temperature indicators. The maximum temperature on the power circuits is 75 degrees Celsius. This is no longer a good thing. This temperature the power can become less stable, which can affect the overclocking parameters since during overclocking the power supply is even more loaded. The temperature on the memory is 69 degrees and after working for a while longer and warming up the rest of the card, the temperature can reach as high as 80 degrees Celsius. The temperature on the GPU is 67 degrees with the down voltage GPU for mining ether where the GPU isn't the most important piece of the process, the processor will most likely be alright in a room with temperature of 28 degrees Celsius. But let's see what temperature the program is showing. Strange, the temperature shown in the program differs from what our thermal imager is revealing. This indicates that the sensor on the card isn't fulfilling its task. And most importantly, the program doesn't show the temperature of the memory and the power supply units. This is very misleading to many since GPU works at a comfortable temperature and everything else is overheating. Cards quickly fail and users understand what the fault was only after the breakdown occurs. Let's look at how hot the coolers are. We can see that when functioning at 100% they get up to 59 degrees Celsius. 
and 100%, the string can also heat up and add heat to the board. The more it wears out, the hotter it will get. We overclocked the card and decided to see its potential, but did this by timing and modifying the BIOS. We achieved 33.5 Ethereum mega hash with no errors during mining. This is a fantastic result. If you are interested in how this was achieved, write to us and we'll send more details to those subscribed to our newsfeed. The most important conclusion is that without using liquid cooling, memory and power supply modules overheat. It affects stability of the hash rate and after a continuous use of 2-3 to three months, the chip will degrade, so it affects the income received from mining. We in Camino know this. In our devices we take care to cool the power modules and the memory. That's why we can overclock the standard card higher than with air cooling and the card will not burn within the first few months. This can only be achieved by using liquid cooling. We'll show this in the following videos. Thank you for watching, subscribe, give us a thumbs up if you like the video and ask your questions in the comment section below. All the best.